we can finally close the door on the Boogeyman chapter. And now we can reopen the door on the Boogeyman chapter. Time to review The Boogeyman again, though this time it's an adaptation of the Stephen King short story, The Boogeyman. Final thoughts, bad movie. Wait, I'm not supposed to do that yet. The woman in the room? What? I'm so confused. Okay, this The Boogeyman was on a tape with another Stephen King short, so... We'll take a look at it, too, I guess. I mean, since it's on there, and I mean, otherwise, this review would be pretty short. So the woman in the room is about a woman in the room. Final thoughts, it's not much of a movie. Just like this wasn't much of a review. Okay, let's go on with it. Pretend I didn't do that. I mean, I'm just so embarrassed that I just said that that I wrote it and left it in the video. <laughs> Um, our main character is Stephen King? No, wait, after doing some research, aka IMDb search, his name is John. Also, according to IMDb, these movies are about some kind of space battle. Not quite sure I see either of these stories ending up in space. Maybe the Boogeyman, but not till the ninth sequel, at least. It itches. John King is visiting his mom in the hospital, and she's dying of terminal nose itch. I can't move anything in my nose itches. Isn't that a pitiful way to be with your nose itching and not able to scratch it? Do you like a smoke? Oh yes, yeah, smoking is actually the only cure for terminal nose itch. Jeez, John, you're really the kind of guy to give a drowning person a glass of water, aren't you? Da, 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 da. I uh, brought something from your house, from your medicine chest, for the pain. Okay, so John is thinking of putting his mom out of her pain, but understandably has reservations. So instead of his red and blue kill you pills, he gives her the real aspirin. She's chewing aspirin? Not quite sure what a great idea that really is. Uh Oh, it's not. Oh, uh, well, the nicotine will wash away that acetaminophen taste. Next scene, he's telling his brother over the phone how their mom is sick. This is all the same information we got in the previous scene, and you know, this is a short film anyway, so couldn't you think of a better use of your time than padding? Well, anyway, John is a defense attorney, and he's meeting his client so he can tell him about his mom, too, of course. Jeez, man, you look like shit. My mother. She's dying. Of what? Cancer. Yeah, no matter how many cigarettes I give her, it's not getting any better. Secondarily, he's also got a bit of kinda cruddy news. I hear they're uh, talking the death sentence. Yeah. Yeah? I'm sorry. Well, it's not your fault. Guess that old judge just took a disliking to me. <laughs> I love how nonchalant this guy is about getting the death sentence. Yeah, they're gonna kill me, but don't worry about it. It's not that big a deal. The judge mentioned to me that he would prefer it if you were to dress a little nicer in his courtroom. Anyway, I bought you this. No shit. I'm touched. Yeah, it was on sale. You think it's going to make a difference? No, but it may make the judge happy. Well, okay then. Anything to make the judge that sends me to death happy. Might as well bring some joy before I die. You know, whatever. Well, how does this look? Pick it up from the bailiff. I wouldn't want you to hang yourself in your cell or anything. Oh, perish the thought. <laughs> your impending death is the funniest part of my day. It's not too late to change your plea. Tough what? Insanity. 
Thanks, but no thanks. Why not? Because it's bullshit, that's why not. Yeah, well that's enough about your silly death sentence. Let's bring this back on track to my mom. I hope you have a story that'll relate almost exactly to my situation with her. How many people have you killed in your lifetime? Including the war. Well, what, what did it feel like? It's nothing special, okay? It never did give me a heart on. But it never meant anything. Once. Killed a friend of mine. When I got his legs blown away. You killed him? He was my buddy. And I wasn't about to let him die gang green like that. Oh, what do you know? You do us a favor and get a shave and wear the tie. And would you please think about what I said? And would you get some rest? You look terrible. Why don't you swear off the cigarettes, too? You're ruining your health. Look who's talking. Well, you think if I quit, I'll live longer? This prisoner cares more about his lawyer's health than the fact that he's gonna die. Something kind of off there, but really, this guy is the most entertaining thing in this film. So, of course, this was his only scene. After that, John is just casually sitting in the middle of the hallway when a wheelchair interrupts him. Hmm, I wonder if this is a dream sequence, and I wonder if the figure now in the chair will end up being his mom, and I wonder if this really adds any drama to the situation. The answer to all is no. Wait, no. It's yes, yes, no. Yeah, no. Yeah. So either because of Mr. I don't care if I die, the random dream, or because she failed John's snap your fingers test, he decides it's time to put her down. I brought you some pills from home. Did you? They're good for pain. Can I chew them? Well, if you're fine chewing aspirin, I suppose so. They're really powerful, Mom, especially against living things. You should probably only take 17 at once. So, um, yeah, this is kind of awkward. I think it needs some better scoring. The mothers are watching you. Be careful of all that you do. The dream state might give us a clue. But the mothers are watching you. Oh, come on, it's only marginally worse than what they actually play. And she dies! <clears throat> so yeah, that's something I normally have never have touched, but I really don't feel bad for joking about this one, because it really does not capture the emotional impact it's going for. I mean, really, this thing kind of depends on you getting invested in Johnny's top decision about putting his mom down, but it's really not there. They don't make you get invested, it's just we see his mom is suffering, he talks on the phone, he talks to his client, has a weird dream, and decides to do it. But imagine if this story did work for you. Would you want to watch something called The Boogeyman right after? I don't know what they're thinking with this pairing choice, but I do know that makes me so mad, smile, smile. Anyway, now that the euthanasia fun is over, we can get on to the main attraction. Another stupid movie I'm only reviewing because I'm on this boogeyman kick. We meet our main character, the front door. Then one of the secondary characters shows up, Lester Billings, and he's got something really important to say. Okay, couldn't hear that, but at least he's really good at turning lights off. I guess if you don't actually have anything interesting going on, just play loud music over the credits and that makes it dramatic! Daddy? Help me. Daddy? Where are you? The well, the water, the mirror! The well, the water, the mirror! No, the boogeyman doesn't live in mirrors this time. He's back to the closet where he belongs. That's right, I said it. I should have gone right into his office, taken a whole dozen of those cola bottles, and taken a whole dozen and just. Oh, good, he's still mumbling, though at least this time I could make out something about cola bottles. I'm sure that'll be important later. Haha, <laughs> no, it won't. Fuck you. Well, fuck you too, buddy. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Stupid surprise father with a dead daughter. <laughs> oh, wow. I've become a monster. Oh, well. After some crying while loud noises play, he slams the closet door shut, seeming to indicate that that had something to do with it, despite having found the dead kid in the bathtub. You don't understand. We live right next door, and I wanted to come over and see her. She's a friend of mine. I have to talk to her. She's a friend of mine. Okay? You don't understand. Oh, she's a friend of yours. Well, in that case, come right in. Would you like to have a poke around the crime scene? Better hold up with that until girl in to see the body. Oh, so this is what Dewey was doing before the screen films. So afraid to have her own room. Told you not to move her. But she died in the bathroom! I think Mr. Billings, we should have a little talk. Anyway, it's time for this cop to get tough with Billings because he suspects him or something, I guess. And where, Mr. Billings, was the body when you found it? Billings! Where was the body? Is it dead? The body? bed? Was her room the bathroom? Or did Billings throw his child's body in there and then forget? Did you find it rather strange that the same thing happened to you less than three months ago? Another crib death, maybe. Answer me, Billings! And do you know what this is leading to? Absolutely nothing. Oh, good! Yeah, put that black text over black! Genius is at work here! I'm Dr. Harper. Your case is... Extremely interesting one. <laughs> yeah, your kid's dying and you losing it because of that really is interesting. <laughs> I was responsible for the deaths of my children. You mean you actually killed them? No. Yep, so during these two weeks, Billings lost the last kid after moving them to their comfortable tool shed bedroom. Or perhaps even sillier, the same bedroom they lost the other two kids in. And now he's scared of all closets because they were open every time one of his kids died. Exactly how were the children murdered? Look, don't try to jerk it out of me. Yeah, don't you try your fancy psychiatrist tricks like directly asking me the question. Who killed the children? Boogeyman. Boogeyman killed him. Uh huh. You think I'm crazy, all right? No, I don't think you're crazy at all. Are you crazy or something? Daddy! 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 Boogeyman! Now who taught you that? Mommy, there's no such thing as the boogeyman. Now come on. And then went in and asked Rita why she wanted to teach the kid a word like boogeyman. Said she never taught him to say that. So before killing the kid, the boogeyman made a formal introduction? Wait, did the kid disappear? I assume the body was found since they said he was dead. Is the body just hidden somewhere in this picture? I moved Cheryl into his old room. I loved having the kid in with us. But, but you can't get overprotective. You, you make a kid a cripple that way. My mother, every time she used to take me to the beach, she'd say, uh, you know, don't go out too far. You've only eaten an hour ago. Even look out for sharks, for Christ's sake. To this day, I cannot even go to the beach without I feel like I want to puke my guts out. Oh yeah, that reaction is totally normal, and just due to your mother giving you moderate parenting, Mr. The Boogeyman Killed My Kids, you're sane as fuck. Then it's time for a scene of that cop discussing Billings' kid's death, but like I said, it's not going anywhere, and this is his last scene. You'd really think within a short film like this they wouldn't want to waste time, but you'd be wrong, as right after that it's a scene of Billings doing crosswords and drinking. Next, it's looking like Billings might actually have a run-in with the Boogeyman, but of course it's just a flashback of a dream. How lamel Boogeyman of you, King Boogeyman? You know, maybe if you think of a thing long enough and you believe in it, Maybe it becomes real. Oh, so we're going by Boogeyman 3 logic now. But who believed in the Boogeyman in the first place here? Maybe Billings believed in the Boogeyman because of all that beach advice his mother gave him. Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! We get a brief moment where it looks like it might have been Billings who actually killed his kids. I guess the real killer fakeout is a rule for any first of the Boogeyman films. It was a toy, Billings. Really not all that scary. <laughs> A 
apparently the big falling down the stairs in slow motion revelation was a big breakthrough because we've run out of time. Billing. <laughs> Be a good fella. <laughs> Only the best parent would fall down the stairs for their child, especially in slow motion. You go out, talk to the receptionist, and make an appointment for tomorrow. But the receptionist is gone, so Billings goes back to see Dr. Mustache, who's just hanging out, hanging out in the closet. It is only a game, Mr. Billings. <laughs> Well, Dr. Boogeyman sure is lucky he decided to come back, I guess, but really, why hold a therapy session, then kill him? Guess it's only a game, and really, this was the most successful of all the Boogeymen, as he got to kill the main character, and charges his state a ridiculous amount for therapy! And then they play lines of dialogue during the credits, like there really was some kind of amazing revelation in this whole thing. You know, maybe if you think of a thing long enough and you believe in it, Maybe it becomes real. Yeah, silly. Both of the movies on this had little time due to the short film format, and both wasted it. The cutting was also often awkward due to it, as a character would suddenly be in a scene or appear somewhere else jarringly, and the stories never used the time properly to build up the characters or atmosphere they were going for. And in The Boogeyman, most of the shocking reveals end up being humorous. I mean, especially Dr. Boogeyman's taking his face off. Ugh, these stupid Boogeyman movies, they really just began to stress me out and give me a headache. I just need something to lower my blood pressure, that would really help. Ugh, I don't know why I let these movies get to me so bad sometimes. Neither do I. I mean, it's only a game. Wait, aren't those the... No! Let it go! We've moved on! Well, maybe you have, but I haven't. Besides, this is what the people want! Ah, oh, you asshole! Oh. <laughs> no! I'm not giving you guys satisfaction! <laughs> I can ruin this for you! It's easy, really! All I have to do is reference Doctor Who again! <laughs> I wanna go now! Going is cool! <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Doesn't look too friendly This monster seems so big My nerves are gonna break Failures don't let me down You need to be around Grab that running one up And blast that sink a new one This movie Looks shitty Fail us, so fail us Bring a multi-comedy of fail us, so fail us And some horror movies of fail us, so fail us I don't care that I use sound of fail us, so fail us What's your opinion of I 
I'm the new Phalus and I'm a stupid fucking cat. Look forward to my Meow Mix review coming next.